As many of you know, one of the most confusing things about Ryzen is its RAM, from the memory frequency being a big factor to Ryzen's memory support. I'm going to help you with that. Stay tuned. Welcome back to GamerMeld. You'll probably see if you haven't already that memory manufacturers are actually going to sell Ryzen branded memory. This has happened in the past and shouldn't have any benefits over other RAM, but it can at least give you additional peace of mind that it will more than likely work for your Ryzen CPU powered PC. They'll probably also come with more overclocking profiles for one click overclocks. They just aren't required, but it does give us a nice idea as to the impact Ryzen is having in the enthusiast community. So one to picking the RAM. Especially if you're picking anything above 2667, the absolute first thing to do when deciding it is to figure out what motherboard you have or what motherboard you plan on buying. Of course, one factor in determining your motherboard should be the RAM they support to begin with, but that's up to you and whether you want to overclock, etc. Once you've got the motherboard in question, go to the manufacturer's site. In this example, I'm looking at the ASUS ROG Crosshair 6 Hero. When you go to the site, this should be relatively the same for all manufacturers. You then click on support and find your motherboard. Next, you want to go into memory device support. Sometimes it will be listed as QVL or qualified vendors list. This is the RAM that's guaranteed to work on your motherboard and has been tested by the manufacturer. Go to the one for Ryzen here. You can see they update it quite a bit. That's because manufacturers are still testing RAM and figuring out what works the best. So you know what your motherboard supports, but what should you get? Frequency, timings, capacity, dual, single channel, etc. Well, Ryzen is very much a different beast than Intel, and in many ways it's a good thing, but in some, it's adding confusion. Sure, there are the basics like only supporting DDR4, but there's a ton more to it. Let's go over what to look for. The first is capacity. Ryzen only seems to support up to 64 gigabytes, but really, no gamer will need anywhere near that. One suggestion is certain though, I wouldn't suggest lower than 16 gigabytes for anyone. Those who do a lot of video editing or other professional work might be better to go up to 32, but it depends on what you do. Next up is frequency. This is really where Ryzen can show us its muscle, and AMD has actually given us some great information based on their testing. First, it's good to discuss what Ryzen can and can't do when it comes to frequency. This graph essentially gives you everything you need to know. Ryzen can only work in dual channel, and the higher the rank, with up to two, lessens the amount of frequency you can get to because it adds more strain on the memory controller. If you're curious to know more about ranking, Hardware Canucks has a great article on it. I'll leave a link in the description below. Basically, in most cases, the way to know what rank you have is to look at its single or double-sided memory. Single-sided memory is almost always single channel, and single channel is what you're going to want unless you need 16GB DIMMs. That is actually one way Ryzen branded memory can help when it comes to alleviating this confusion. Note that Ryzen still supports dual rank, you just won't get as high of a frequency, but if you need to go for 32GB and definitely 64, you may not have a choice. The last thing to note on this graph is that using two DIMMs instead of four gets you higher frequencies, so keep that in mind, but definitely look to your motherboard's QVL for reference. Now when it comes to picking your frequency on Ryzen, speed or higher frequency is important like really important. Faster RAM makes a bigger difference than it has in the past and this includes gaming. If you want to know why that is, check out my video from two days ago on Ryzen's problems. LegitReviews.com actually did a fantastic article that looks at the scaling of the RAM as you moved up in frequency. I'll have a link in the description on that as well, but the results were incredible. Going from 2133 to 3200, they found a whopping 50% improvement in memory bandwidth and they only seemed to test one game, but AMD showed a similar result with F1. Either way, and Deus Ex Mankind Divided running at 1080p, they saw a 16% increase when going from 2133 to 3200. We're talking 95 frames to 110 frames. Obviously, your experience will vary because they were using certain hardware. One thing to note is that there was almost no difference at 1440p, which goes back to the idea that higher frame rates depends more on the GPU, so that ultimately ends up being the bottleneck. If you're debating on what frequency RAM to get, you can see the graph shows there are less gains to be had from some frequency jumps than others, but of course each game can vary that quite a bit. You just have to weigh the options for what you want and what you can afford. While still on the topic of frequency, we also need to discuss overclocking. 
Ryzen officially only supports 2667 and only with single rank and two DIMMs. If you get RAM rated at 3200 mega transfers per second, to actually use that speed you have to have a motherboard that supports the overclocking to get it done. So definitely check your motherboard's ability. This is one thing you're going to see as you go up into more expensive motherboards. I did a motherboard video like this a little while back, but I didn't know at the time the significance of memory frequency in Ryzen, so I may do a new one before long. Either way, definitely check what your particular motherboard can do. Also know that if you do overclock, you may void your warranty. AMD makes it clear that you will, quote, void any applicable AMD product warranty, end quote. So please keep this in mind. As far as what frequency overclock it officially supports, AMD currently goes up to 3200 with overclocking. But that seems to be changing soon as AMD officially stated they're working on it and intend to issue updates to motherboard partners in May. Which motherboard manufacturers will choose to support higher frequencies is up to them, but AMD has shown Ryzen working on Twitter with 3400. The last thing to discuss with frequency is to not purchase any DDR4 at 3000 or 3400. AMD specifically says that they do not offer memory dividers for them. It's best to go ahead and get 3200 or 3500 respectively. The last thing to really think about beyond frequency is your timings. Timings essentially add latency to your RAM. It's kind of a balancing act between your frequency and timings. Higher frequency lowers latency, but higher timings raise latency. It definitely seems getting the higher frequency is more important than lower timings, though there isn't a ton of benchmarks to look at that. I basically suggest higher frequency with the lowest timings you can afford and your motherboard supports. So yeah, that concludes the video today. I know I didn't go over everything, and some things are subject to change as we learn more about AMD's new chips, but this should be a good start to nudging you in the right direction. I'll have an affiliate link to the different Ryzen 7 CPUs in the description below. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. I have a ton of great content coming, and as always, have a great day.